In this video, artist Juliet Travis demonstrates pastel painting techniques to the members of Northside Art Association. Juliet has been a member of the Gateway Pastel Artists since its inaugural year in 1999. She's also a member of the Gateway East Artists Guild since 2002 and a past member of the St. Louis Artists Guild. Although primarily a self-taught artist, she has taken many classes and workshops over the years to hone her skills as an artist. Juliet has studied and worked with various artistic techniques and media and has trained under several nationally known and local pastel artists. Juliet is currently a resident artist at Framations Art Gallery in St. Charles, Missouri and at the Clayton Gallery in Clayton, Missouri. Learn more about artist Juliet Travis at www.juliettravis.com. Following are a few selected video clips from Juliet's demonstration. This is UART sanded paper. This is an 800 grit. It's very fine sanded. I like to work on uh, Sennelier's McCart pastel card, but I've had problems with that in the past. If it gets wet, even just a tiny bit, the surface sloughs off. So, um, because it's a vegetable based material. And they have, there's all kinds of different sanded uh, and grit surfaced uh, pastel cards or boards or papers, and they're wonderful. I, I won't use anything else. I don't like the my Tiense papers or the just a little bit of rough paper because they don't hold enough pastels. Uh, the soft pastels come off very easily, they smooth onto the paper very nicely. I rub them in with my fingers and br brushes and different things. So to be able to get enough layers, to like because you just layer the pastels one color on top of the other to get that depth and the volume um, for your painting, um, you need to have a lot of layers on there. So this one's already I just this is the basic this is my base colors that I just put on That's here. One layer. This is one or two layers. This is all this is, uh, and they're the harder pastels. I don't know how many people are familiar with pastels themselves. These are uh, my new pastels. These are the hard pastels. Um, I even like to uh, pass them around. Uh, they've got a lot more binder to them. They're, you can get a lot of detail with these. These are great. A lot of people use these for um, uh, portraits because you can get little eyelashes and every hair on their head. Uh, it's just, they're wonderful. Um, but I use them as my base colors because they're inexpensive and I can get a lot of color on there for an inexpensive price. Whereas when I want to use my unison very very soft feels like butter pastels that come off very uh, smoothly and they cost me five dollars a stick Ooh. i can't for one color um i want to be able to get my base colors in with uh, less expensive blocking in my colors just like you would any other type of painting with oils or, or anything you want to get your base colors blocked in so if you, i don't know if you want to pass those around at all so as, as you can see pastels are messy how many layers can you get with the sand? Uh, I've gotten up to six, seven, eight, ten. Wow. It just depends on. Because well, you're lucky if you get two on paper. Right? Exactly, exactly. Now I've used watercolor paper, this the, the um, rough surface the watercolor, not oh the hard, God. not the hot press, but the cold press. Yeah. Well, very dense watercolor paper. You get a lot of layers on that, and almost sinks into the paper, into the fiber itself. But you really need to be, you really need a sanded surface to be able to get layer upon layer on like on layer. The regular papers that they call drawing papers or pastel papers that you find at Michaels or or uh, some of the other stores, um, they're they're good to start with. But um, I get very frustrated with those. I got frustrated with them at the very beginning when I started working with pastels many years ago because they just didn't hold enough the pastels, the pastels were just falling off the paper. And you get to a certain point where no more will go back on. You can't get any more on that on that paper. Um, I don't fix my pastels. Um, once they're done, I put them behind glass. And the reason I don't fix them is because the fixing tip will dull it and darken the pastel somewhat. I've never found a fixing tip that doesn't darken the pastels. And the reason I like pastels are the bright, vibrant colors. Pastels are pure pigment. They just have a small amount of binder in it. So when you Using oils or watercolors, you're using your your media is is um, diluting those colors, those brilliant colors. So the pastels, which is are great about them, is you're not really diluting the colors so much. You're almost painting with pure color. Um, if you're talking health and safety when you're doing painting, I know um, 
there's uh, people worry about oil paints, but you have to worry about, not worry, but you have to work with pastels too. I have a HEPA filter in my studio that I turn on anytime I'm working. I wet wipe my studio down on a routine basis because to try to keep the dust down. You don't eat or drink when you're working with pastels. I have a bottle of water over there. It's closed. I don't touch it when I have dirty hands. I wipe my hands constantly. When I um, have kids in a class, I'm showing them how to do it. I'm always, you know, handing them the, the, the wet wipes. I go through containers of wet wipes. For one painting, I could go through two or three containers of wet wipes just because I'm constantly wiping my hands. Also, I'm trying to keep my hands clean so I don't mix up my beautiful yellows with my blues and get a nasty green over here. I think I got one somewhere. Oh yeah, right here. Got a little bit of green in there that I didn't, I hadn't, hadn't intended to because I got a little blue on top of my, my uh, yellow. So, and I, I do a lot of blending with my fingers. A lot of people like to use the blending, the blending sticks. I don't have a lot of, I don't like those because I don't get a lot of control, so I use my fingers. And I'll pick, you know, this finger is the light blue, this one's the middle blue, and this one's the dark blue, until I run out of fingers and I have to start by after this layer, after this first initial couple layers, I'll start using the soft pastels now. Oh, right uh, Because I might have a section in here that might only have two or three layers in it. But something right next to it, this big cloud over here might have eight layers in it. But this oh. bright yellow might only have two or three layers. Oh. So once I get the base colors in, um, then I, and I start working with them, uh, I, it, I, I might have just a couple of layers, so I'm, uh, I'm always going to be using those soft pastels. Oh. Now, you, there is a danger when you're using soft pastels if you want to get detail and you've used four or five layers of soft pastels. You try to get a, a, a hard pastel and you draw a line through that, it just all it does is take off the, the layer of soft. So you have to work with it a little bit. So if I want to do detail work up here with grasses or, or get a little bit of uh, fine detail work in here, I'm not going to put that many layers of color. Um, have you ever used like, the pastel pencils or anything? I do. I do. I do. But there again, they're a hard pastel. Oh, okay. So you're going to have even more problems with the hard pastel pencils than the unison, I'm sorry, not the unison, but the new pastels trying to get a detailed uh, work over the top of soft pastels. Soft pastels are just like butter, they're just fabulous. But, and they have great, great colors, but you have to learn to work with them. One of the things that I find is most people get mud when they first use pastels. And everything turns some, several different colors of gray because they get their fingers dirty. They, they get, once they're, they're starting to work with this and they've got, all of a sudden they've got all the colors on there, you know, and I'm constantly wiping them on my foam or wiping them on my, my piece of my paper towel and trying to keep them clean. So it's just a, a, a matter of keeping it clean. Pastels are very much like oils or watercolors where you're you're trying to get your dark colors in there first and if you're going to build say these clouds probably are going to have five or six colors on them by the time I'm done and I'm going to try to build up from this dark color to the lighter colors as I go on that doesn't mean I can't put some darker colors in there here and there but overall I want to be able to build up dark to light because again you put that nice light color in there and then you want to put a dark blue over the top of that, you're not going to see the dark to the light color behind it, or you're not going to be able to, to, to uh, scumble over it and be able to have that, that beautiful, brilliant yellow come through. You're going to pick up the, the dark color on top of it and get gray, or dark red, or dark brown. So, as you can see, all I've done here is I graded off the, um, the board to match my photograph. I blew my photograph up. I figured out what my dimensions were. Figured out what, what what I wanted on my paper, as you can see. Um, and the trick with this one is going to be all the details going to be the the brilliance is going to be back here. And with photographs, I don't know how many of you work with photographs. You know, photographs flatten everything out and they darken everything. So all of these beautiful clouds up here, when I was looking at them, I'm taking the pictures. Uh, you can see all the swirling of the clouds, but you can't see that in the photograph. So you're going to have to rely on your memory or anything else that you can get or other paintings that you've done to try to get that nice swirl of clouds up here to look like swirls of clouds and not just a big block of, of gray where it looks like in the photograph. So 
practice working with photographs and, and, and practice working with real life first and then practice work with photographs because you get much better work done if you have done a lot of sketching outside, if you've done plein air work outside. Like I said, I'm not going to do a large painting like this outside. I'm going to do small, you know, 8x10s, 5x7s, um, and trying to get that, that quick gestural type, type work, but you can get a good feel for those clouds. So what I'm going to do is just start layering. Like I said, usually I have a big studio easel, and I have this propped up over the top of it, so I have a good color reference here. Unless I'm going to go here and just, you know, bang on, even if I bang on the back of this, it doesn't come off because I've got a sanded surface. It's really stuck to that sanded surface. If I would try to do that with some Mytians paper or, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, or with a um, just a standard drawing paper, it's going to start falling off. You're going to see it coming down. Use strokes that are, they're very loose and they're chopping. See, this is a darker color. And you can, what we call stumble these across here. I usually take the paper off. I keep it a half an inch, okay. quarter an inch to I a half an inch say, away. You're, you're doing something with the yeah. glass. I always, I, you never put a pastel on to, with the glass right so. on the surface. You keep right. at least a quarter inch away. These large paintings that I have here, I do not mat them. I put them in the frames as they are. I keep them a half an inch away from the glass with the spacers. Um, so, and Amy frames them for me, and she loves framing my <laughs> pastel. Don't you, Amy? Not That's my most favorite thing in the entire world. <laughs> I do. Yes. I do put my dark, dark colors in first. Again, like I said, this is my um, my base coat that I get that I had with my harder pastels, and I can work on top of that. And the more you smooth your pastels out with your fingers or whatever implements you might use the more you're filling up the tooth of the paper. So you have to... You know, I find that strange because I would think sandpaper would take your take more of your pastel. Oh, it does. You get a lot more color on the paper than you would. You know, this is going to take a lot of pastel right there. That's going to take a lot of pastel. But it just doesn't fall off. And nope. that's what I no. find uh, to be very... It's not going to fall off. And see, I wouldn't leave that like that, but, you know, I, I might start with that and make it look to get a little bit of my, my darks in there. You know, maybe I want to get my dark over here, and I want a little dark over here, and I'm looking at my painting over here, and, I, you know, I've got lots of darks over here. A lot of darks over here. And then, when I'm done with those, I can leave them like that, or I can smooth them out. I personally kind of like to leave them, and then I just put the lighter over the top of that. You use your finger most of the time. You don't ever use any of those uh, sticks. I don't. I don't like the sticks. I can't, don't have enough control with it. Yeah, I press a lot harder. With the sanded paper, you really have to get a lot of uh, force on there to get it into the, pa into the paper. So I'm... One of the things you want to do, you don't want to be going back and forth with the pastel. I was just going to say, you're, you, you, you're filling up the tooth. You might not notice it from where you're at, but I'm, I'm lifting it up. Once I, I go this way, I'm lifting it up and then going back this way again. So I'm not going back over the same thing. I'm not pulling that dark from behind back over the, the part that I've just. Is that why you put the brown on first? The dark gray? Yes. That's why you did that. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to put the dark gray on, then I'm going to put the light gray over the top of it. So I might have pieces. And this, a, a painting this big is going to take me weeks to finish. I mean, this is just, like I said, this is just the beginnings of, of the work that I do. But when I get in the groove, I could work on this for hours at a, at a day. See, like this right here? I'm starting to find that those darks are receding to the back, and all you're starting to see is the is what's in, on the top. And I work all over the page. I don't, um, you know, do go from the top to the bottom. There's a nice little dark right there. I'll just make that little cloud. So I'm always going to be wanting to. Uh, 
work on the negative space as well as the positive space. I want to be able to take all my colors and, and put them throughout my painting so it blends well. Um, I've got this dark, you notice that this, but I got this, the sun's coming through the clouds right here. You get that brilliant yellow, which is gonna show up over here. I put the dark brownish orange on there because of the base behind it. I could see that dark brownish orange behind that br brilliant yellow. So I want to be able to put the yellows over the top of that. And you can end up, um, oh yeah. And see again, I have to be able to and then I can start. Gotta get the group I gotta get the blue off my fingers. And again, not only have to, do I have to wipe it, but then I have to dry it, too, because you don't want to put wet fingers on. So I do a lot of this. <laughs> so. And I want this to be smooth, so I'm going to use, I'm, I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, blending on this one. I, would, I can see how you, why you like to do uh, trials and everything, because... I can already see them rolling up there. Yeah, and that's what I'm trying to do. With pastels, the one thing you can do, it's, uh, I think, is a lot like oils with the brush strokes, is your strokes on the paper are going to mimic, you want it to be able to mimic the direction, you know, the direction of the land coming out this way, the rolling of the, of the clouds themselves. You want to be able to see some of those strokes in there so you can actually feel like those clouds are rolling. And the more... To me, the more strokes that you see in the clouds, the more depth you get with it. I have a couple of paintings that I've done where it's very smooth. The clouds are very, you know, have a little bit of texture to them, but they're very smooth and they're all far, they're far in the background. Um, and that looks really nice. But if you get something where you have big clouds up here, up front, you want to be able to see those clouds and how they're rolling. So you don't want to see a lot of smooth. You want to be able to see that texture that comes out. And I really pull out the color. I might have oranges up here in the cloud over here. Over here. And then I start working on because, you know, you can't see it on the picture, but I can remember there was color in those clouds. It was a lot more than just the grays and the blues. I had greens in there, and you might not, you might see this, you know, the, this, you know what it looks like when the sky, when the clouds start turning green. I've got a, a painting that I really like of clouds, and you can see the dark thunderheads are green. Their base is green. The base color is green. And you're going to be able to see you know, these rolls of green, when this is done, you're going to see those bits of color coming out. Again, I have to, I have to, bring, a, I have to bring this back when it's done because you'll, you'll be able to and pick out those colors yeah. Yeah. Um, as I'm working on it. And then I might, again, put a little bit of the gray, the light gray over the top of that. A little bit of the lighter gray over the top of that. And I see how I like that. And I make mistakes all the time. And I put colors in there and think, oh my gosh, that's going to look horrible. And I'm able to, you know, put something else in its place. Put another color on top of it. Add a little purple, you know, to that. to that. Especially if I want to see a little light on top of that. You know, this over here looks a little bit lighter. Why does that look lighter? I'm going to be able to see it. You know, I want to be able to draw this. This part is going to be a lot darker. This this is going to be a little bit, you know, a lot less dark. And this is going to be less dark. But I'm still going to try to get those blue grays in there. And interspersed, I'm going to have the oranges and the and the yellows and the purples. You know, you don't really notice it on here, but there's a lot of purple. That light is in between those clouds. Those, those clouds are purple. And then I get the dark clouds underneath that are rolling. Yeah. Let's do this one. Not too dark. Yeah, it's That's amazing the colors that are really. 
Yeah, I mean, you really do see, there's so many colors that you can see in these clouds. And you're going to start, within the clouds, you have, the, their edges are smooth as they go, and smoother and smoother as they go along, and those colors just blend in really nicely. It's made in your body. And I couldn't do, I wouldn't be able to blend like this with a, um, with papers. Not nearly as much. You know, what, what is my problem with this one right here? It's too dark. I got it too dark compared to what the darks that I'm going to have up here. These need to be darker. This is too light or too dark. What do I do? Add a little light purple to that. And then we'll add a little bit of light blue. And these, I'm just going to leave the stumbles for right now. And then, again, I'm going to have little bits and pieces of the orange. Look at that. Where is that orange coming from? It's coming from that sun behind those clouds. If I work on this for, you know, two or three hours, it, it'll look completely different than it did when I first brought it in. Now, I saw the finished piece that you put in the gallery that you demoed here. Uh -huh. Beautiful. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, um, they look, they look different. And then, of course, you know, I want to use the light colors, the, the brilliant light colors at, at, at the very end. You know, and I very seldom use pure white. Yes, that's what we want to see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here, I'll give you an idea. Of I'm going to have to because you're not going to be able to appreciate it next to the dark. Because I mean, if I put that nice bright, you know, yellow right there, it just doesn't have that same oomph as it does. Okay. You know, as it's going to once this is is going to be out. You know, right here and right here, it's going to going to be in there. And right over here, uh, this is the big one. And again, see I'm transferring, starting to transfer color, so I have to... Uh, it would be nice to do that with water. <laughs> Since you work in oils, you work in this. Mm -hmm. Do you find it more expensive to do? Uh, pastel yes. and oil? Since I, you said that little stick cost you $5? Right. Uh, it, pastels are, are more, to me, more expensive because every single stick I buy is anywhere between two dollars and five dollars, depending on what brand it is, and wow. if I buy a whole set or if I buy one stick at a time, if I get them on sale, and I have hundreds and hundreds of sticks of pastels. Because I have to layer one color on top of another to get the depth and the volume, you're constantly looking for the perfect color that you want. And most of the time, you don't have it in your set. <laughs> and it's not something that you can just blend and mix like an oil paint. You have to be able to have something close enough. Like I bought all these. Um, you, you can't know, mix your pastel. You have to layer one on top of the other. Okay. All right. You can't, you can't mix them. You're just going to uh, erase one off the top. You have to blend them or you have to layer on top of the other one and show the other color come, to come through. You know, how does, you know, that does not look, I don't know if you were paying attention, but if you look different, you know, that little orange bob that was very brilliant just a minute ago is now very dull because I put that green right next to a complementary color, one on top of another, they're dulling each other out. And if I put that, put that beautiful green on this tree right next to that orange, you know, it's going to look really brilliant because it's right next to that reddish orange. So it really makes that green pop out. But How are you going to fix that green on the yellow? Right over here? Yes. Well, I am going to put a cloud there that isn't in, in the photograph. Yeah. I'm going to break, I'm going to break up. I can, but you're going to get a lot. You're, it's going to be green. 
I mean, if I can, I can, I can put yellow over the top of that, but I'm still going to have green. You see what I mean? So I can do a light, you know, but I don't want a light, fluffy look because that is part of the sky. I want it smooth. So I'm going to have to put a cloud there because that was just a, you know, I had a piece of green in my hand and I put it, I, you know, it was supposed to go up here and I ended up, you know, you know, losing my little, my grip and it, and I hit the canvas and I have that nice little green there. So what I'm going to do, yeah, so I'm going to put a nice little cloud in front of that little spot right there. So it'd be nice if I could just cover that up, but it's really not going to cover up very well. So I just make... Lemonade, lemonade out of lemons. Layer after layer, would that cover that up? Not really well. You're still going to get that little hint of green because it's soft color over a soft, you know, you got soft color over a soft color. I'm just going to be pulling some of that green with me. So again, over here, I got now with the blue, it's a little bit different. I can get enough of that blue over the top of it. And you really don't have to see it. And I can get another lighter blue over the top of that. Maybe this will come over here. Falling apart. Maybe I'll smooth that out a little bit. I have to watch my smoothing, especially if I'm trying to cover something up because I might just smooth right back into existence. So you don't see that green there, do you? No. So I can fix that, but with that yellow, that green right on top of that yellow, it's going to be really difficult for me to fix. Now, luckily, I put a lot more yellow in there than I actually really need. The sky is actually going to be over here, so I might be able to fix some of that with the blue. Well, I know they have the charcoal powder. They don't, they don't carry a pastel powder? They do. You can get pan pastels. You can get pastel um, a base to make your own pastels. So you do actually... Like yeah, you make a paste and roll your own, you can roll your own pastels, which is nice because you can get any color you really want. You can mix your colors. Uh, you can make it as soft as you want or as hard as you want with as much binder as you want to put in there. Um, you can make it as big as you want. Uh, so making your own pastels is kind of fun. To me, that's not what I want to do. I want to be able to put paint, color on the paper. So I've made a few pastels in classes and learned how to do it. And I thought, oh yeah, that's fun but this is what I would rather do. Same thing with making your own surfaces. I've made my own surfaces, too. You can get masonite board, and you can get gesso, and you can tint it, and you put um, a little bit of pumice, you know, very fine uh, grain pumice, and add it to there. You can make it very smooth. You can make a, a sand of surface yourself. Or you can take your brush and chop it up. I did that on one of my uh, paintings, and it turned out really nice where it was a landscape, I used pink in my, uh, as my color base color, I had a, a sanded surface with pumice and gesso, and so much that pink showed through the background that it became part of the paint because it, I had such a heavy brush stroke in the background that I used that, those brush strokes and that, that color that, that came through like light through the forest. So instead of the yellow light through the forest, I had this pink light through the forest, and it looked really, really neat. So there's a lot of things, fun things you can do with pastels and pastel papers. And there's so many different pastel papers to be able to use. What you need to do is experiment to get the effect that you want. If you want something that's very realistic, you want to be able to get detail, stick with the harder pastels and the medium soft pastels and the light paper. If you want something that's a little bit more um, impressionistic, you the standard papers where you can blend it nicely, or you can, I know people that when their paintings are just, just like the impressionists, they're brush stroke, you know, they're, they're, yeah. and there's, I've, I've done paintings like this, and they're fun, and it's just one on top of the other like this. Do you ever mix the medium? Do I ever mix it? Right. I, um, I used a watercolor wash underneath and put the pastel on top of that. that that's a really neat combination. One, instead of using the hard pastels as your base color, you've got the watercolor um, behind it. You can do more of a vignette where you can see the watercolor all around it and just put the pastel in as a highlight. 
or as to make some definition, if you're doing a floral, you can do a lot of it in watercolor and use the pastels to highlight certain flowers in there, so you get a, a mixed medium that way too, which is a, a really nice effect. Really, so watercolor and pastels looks really nice together. I've also seen people do um, gold leaf and pastels. That looks really awesome too. Now you got to put the gold leaf on first, and then work the pastels around it. So you have to really plan out your painting where you know where that gold is going to go. And you can do it with copper leaf, silver leaf, and that type of thing. So when you do that, do you have to put them, uh, the, uh, do you have to um, put the medium on gold leaf before, uh, you know, do you have to spray the gold leaf before you do the pastel on top of it? Um, yes. I, I just wondered. Okay. Yeah. yeah you got to be able to put the... The fix it, not the fix tip, but the, the glue or whatever it is that keeps the gold leaf on, on first. And if you want it only in specific areas, you've got to be very careful about how you put it in there. Put your gold leaf on, put your finished coat on top of that, and then put the pastels on top. Now, are any of those pastels oil pastels? No, you can't mix oils and soft. Okay. You can do oil pastel, which is like an oil stick, just smaller. I mean, I, I, to me, I don't see much, much difference. Um, but you cannot mix a soft pastel and an in a oil pastel. They don't they blend. I see. Yeah, I wish this was something that I could I can see. see where I would love to Oh, they're, they're just, they're, they're awesome for landscapes. Uh, you know, this is, I love doing landscapes. I like to do portraits, but landscapes are my favorite, and I think this is the perfect medium to do a landscape with. Because well, you know, I think also, uh, that's why I suggest, wondered if you ever did pastel, I think pastel, you can correct, well, you can correct oils, but to me, you can correct them. Too, you can. Portrait. You can correct pastels. Pastels are not that difficult to correct. I've used brushes. If I've really botched up an area, you can take a fan brush and just bring it back down to, you know, your base colors. Really? Yeah. You got to be careful that you're not, you know, getting too much. But I've taken a fan brush and brushed away an area because I've really, really hmm. mucked it up really bad. Probably not either. I could, I could. If if that won't come out, I'll, I'll probably take a brush to it and, and just and try to lift off that green and try not to smudge. The, the biggest thing is not smudging it, not smearing it over here, so I got more green over here instead of less green where I want it. So you just have to kind of play with it a little bit. Lift it out. So you can lift it out. Uh, also, if you have filled up the tooth and you still want to add another couple layers, you can take fixative and just say over here. You've messed something up, and you want to be able to go just go over it. You can put spray a fixative, let it dry, and it'll let you go right over that area that you've messed up. Hmm. A so, workable fixative. Yeah, a workable fixative. Yes. Yeah, because I do that on colored pencil. Yeah. I, I'll spray it and then. And then work right over the top of it. You can do the same thing with this. It if I need it. But you got to be careful. Again, even with a workable fixative, you can get a little I bit of that to. dust, that pastel dust that comes through. Yeah. So once in a while it'll flake off, mm -hmm. yeah, and you gotta fix it. <laughs> Let me ask you this: uh, What about a kneaded eraser? I have used it. I've used a kneaded eraser. Um, I actually prefer the little white or hard erasers. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to get a little spot, say maybe I want to pick that up off off of there, just a little bit at a time. Like maybe I got a couple little spots on there I didn't want. Right. Up here I had a, a dark spot in the in the blue, but I fixed it. Um, I can just take a little white eraser and just you know pick it up at the corner. I'm gonna have to wipe that quarter off if I want to do it again. I have to make sure it's dry and try to pick that little bit of uh, pigment off. So there's several ways that you can fix if you if you've messed something up. So you don't just I would never throw a big painting away like this because I, I messed up one spot. I would I would fix it. I would try to pull up the, the color. I try to fix it in and try to work over it. Um, I, I would I've actually done paintings where I didn't like the way it turned out. Or I had something in here, I had a tree in here over me, and that, that, that tree looked terrible. It's too big, too small, it should be over to the left by, you know, five inches. And we did it using pastels. Now, again, that's easier with a hard pastel, but I have been able to do it even with the soft pastels. It's covered, completely changed my paintings in the middle of it because I didn't, I didn't like the way it was turning out. You prefer soft pastels? I right? do. I prefer, prefer the soft pastels. They have the more vibrant colors. 
The harder pastels have more binders, so the more binder, the, the duller the colors. So the soft pastels, very little binder, brilliant colors, and they show up on the on the paper really well. Have there ever? Uh, I'm going to ask a stupid question, maybe, but is there such a thing as doing a collage of pastels? I don't see why not. You ever tried one? No, I haven't. But I don't see why you couldn't. You probably have to fix it if you're going to add layers on top of each other, or you put you layers of different light, things. You can have your light surfaces yeah. on top of dark with, surfaces. That that would put really it on top. Be yeah. Dimensional. Like I said, with the, with the watercolors, be, being able to use a pastel as the, the to get some bring some depth out or bring something forward with a lighter pastel, you know, on top of a, a some flower petals. I mean, that just looks awesome. I've seen that several times. It looks beautiful. Or, you know, have a I've never seen the, where you have pastels in the background and watercolor as being the, the forefront. It's always been the watercolor in, as the background color, and then you uh, add to it with the pastels. But I, I like those two mediums together, and I've used those on many occasions. I've, I've done it where I've colored the whole back board with uh, watercolor and then covered it all up with pastel, but you can still, it still gives it more volume. You can really tell the difference that had watercolor back there. Even though I might have co covered most of it up, I don't know, that color behind it really brings it out. Mm -hmm. I don't like working with white paper, so if I don't have anything else and I don't want to have to try to block in colors, you know, with pastels, I will use a watercolor just to tint my paper. And you were self-taught with all of this, huh? Well, How so, did you start? Did you, like, read books? Well, my, my dad did pastels when I was very, very, very young, and I actually started with the Leslie B. DeMille uh, portrait, uh, pastel portrait books, and I've got two that he did from, uh, from the 50s, I guess it was, that I still have, and just started playing with them. I've always loved art, of course, and, um, you know, you just you just started building up. Like I said, I had a, a, a little set, This was, but this was my first real set of pastels. It wasn't somebody's hand-me-downs or something that was, you know, student grade. This was my first set, and it's, it's really only a medium soft pastel. These are the Rembrandts. It wasn't the really, really soft stuff. And the first time I ever got hold of a unison, I just fell in love with this. Any final thoughts that you'd like to share with us? Final thoughts. Um, pastel, soft pastels to me are just the perfect medium because of the brilliant color. I mean, that's that's what drew me to them. That's what most of my paintings have is that big splash, splash of color. And you'll be, like I said, you'll see five, six, seven different colors in these in these clouds. Um, they are easier to work with than a lot of people think. They do take a little bit of practice. It's mostly keeping your hands clean, keeping your pastels clean. Northside Art Association is a nonprofit arts organization focused in Florissant, Missouri, that serves local artists through community exposure, networking, education, and peer interaction.